It feels like it was just yesterday when the Houston Rockets participated in one of the most lopsided trades in NBA history. A transaction in which the Rockets received a 22-year-old James Harden, who at the time was looking to make an ambitious leap from six men of the year to franchise star. But surprisingly, Harden has been able to fulfill that role, and many would argue he has been able to exceed most expectations. Eight-time All-Star, seven All-NBA selections, three-time scoring champ, and was named League MVP in 2018. What's even more impressive is that these individual accolades translated to team success as well. Since Harden has put on a Houston Rockets jersey, H-Town has easily been one of the more successful franchises in the league. Yet despite the impressive resume of success, here we are in 2020 and Harden wants out of Houston. Which is a shame because this not only concludes the second most successful stretch in franchise history for the Rockets, but it also leaves many people questioning what exactly happened in Houston with the Rockets and Harden. How was it that an organization that was bold enough to have faith in a bench player to lead their franchise somehow fractured the relationship so much so that while still in his prime, he wanted out? The story begins in the summer of 2012, where the Houston Rockets not only acquired James Harden, but also signed 26-year-old big man Omer Asik for defensive purposes, and 23-year-old Jeremy Lin, who was fresh off a year in New York that was so electrifying that it nearly made him a household name. The additions to the roster were intriguing, but not enough to move the needle, and many experts projected that the Rockets were going to struggle to win 30 games in the upcoming year. A huge reason for this was the inexperience of the young team. Harden, Lynn, and Ashik would join a starting five that would feature 24-year-old Chandler Parsons and 23-year-old Patrick Patterson. And even if you were to expand the roster to a 10-man rotation, Still, the most experienced player on the team arguably was James Harden and he was only 23 years old. And the lack of experience showed early on in the season. After 20 games, the Houston Rockets had a record of 9-11, but surprisingly was able to turn it around in the next 15 game stretch where they went 12-3. Leading the charge during that 15 game stretch was James Harden who is posting up MVP caliber numbers. To build on the momentum, the Houston Rockets front office decided to make an addition that would address some defensive concerns in the backcourt by bringing along 6'1 scrappy defensive guard Patrick Beverly, who also was inexperienced but quickly proven that his efforts were very valuable to the team and eventually became a consistent player in the rotation. Now fast forward to the All-Star break and the Houston Rockets continue to add to their success with a record of 29 and 26. Harden continued to lead and for his efforts he was awarded an All-Star appearance. The Rockets would continue their success and end the season with a record of 45 and 37, which not only exceeded expectations for this young team but was enough for them to capture a playoff spot in a tough Western Conference. Now unfortunately the success was short-lived as Houston got bounced out in the first round by Harden's ex-team in OKC and it is important to note that Harden during that series didn't really play too well, but nevertheless, the season was massively successful. Not only did the young core exceed expectations, but also in the process, they found the face of their franchise in James Harden. And during the 2013 offseason, the Rockets were in position to add star caliber talent alongside Harden to give him some help. On July 5th, 2013, the Houston Rockets struck free agency gold by landing 6'10 defensive juggernaut Dwight Howard, who at the time was coming off of a season in which he dealt with nagging back pain, as well as not leaving the greatest impression on his former teammate Kobe Bryant. And actually, even his time in Orlando ended very messy. But despite the questions to his reputation and health, Dwight Howard at the time was undeniably the best player at his position and his experience and productivity seemed to be a great fit for a young up and coming Houston Rockets team. And oh yeah, to the credit of Dwight, he did take the time out to try to build a healthy relationship with his co-star in James Harden. Throughout the 2013 and 2014 season, the Houston Rockets took full advantage of their new acquisition, while James Harden further cemented himself as an upcoming star in the NBA. The Rockets finished the season with a record of 54 and 28, building an offense centered around pick and roll action between James Harden and Dwight Howard and surrounded the two stars with a bunch of shooters that propelled the offense to elite level status. Both Harden and Howard were not only selected to be all-stars, but also made the all-NBA team and Patrick Beverly made second team all-defense. 
With a combination of talent as well as having home court advantage, the Rockets were in position to potentially make a deep postseason run. But unfortunately for the second straight year, the Rockets were knocked out in the first round. And even though, yes, Dame hit one of the greatest series winning shots in NBA history, it is still important to note that yet again, Harden struggled to find a shot in the playoffs. And just a few weeks later, rumors broke that both Harden and Howard attempted to flex their star caliber influence to try to get the other co-star traded. So yeah, a healthy relationship between two co-stars is completely out of the window. The friction between the two players stemmed from conflicting beliefs on how the offense should be ran. At the time, Houston's offense was powered through James Harden dominating the ball and Dwight Howard complimenting Harden through pick and rolls. Dwight believed that the offense and his skill set would be best suited if he was featured more in the post. Unfortunately for Howard, the changes that potentially could be made would have to be postponed for another year, largely due to several events occurring throughout the 2014 and 2015 season. Because throughout the rest of the offseason, the Rockets lost a lot of pivotal pieces. Chandler Parsons walked in for agency, and both Omer Asik and Jeremy Lin were traded to other organizations. To replace the pivotal pieces, Houston brought in savvy veteran role players in both Jason Terry and Trevor Reza, and gave a rookie Clint Capella a larger role than expected. Throughout the regular season, Patrick Beverly would miss a huge portion of the year, and the same can be said about Dwight Howard, who was sidelined for literally half of the regular season dealing with a nagging knee problem. Combine that with the Houston Rockets only being able to fill out the rest of the roster with more veteran role players and Corey Brewer and Josh Smith, and it became clear that even if the Rockets didn't want to, overly depending on James Harden offensively was their best option. And by the end of the year, despite the several roster changes, as well as injuries that both Patrick Beverly and Dwight Howard suffered periodically through the year, the results surprisingly were better than the prior season, with the Rockets winning 56 games. And if that wasn't enough to validate Harden's playing style, the Rockets would go into the playoffs and make it past the first round. And Harden played great in that series. One could actually argue it's the greatest series that Harden had ever played up until that moment in his career. The Rockets would then continue their success in the second round, not only overcoming a 3-1 deficit, but did so against a Clippers team that was heavily favored to not only come out of the Western Conference, but also potentially win a championship that year. Now, as a side note, it is important to highlight that James Harden Harden didn't play the greatest in that series, and actually in game 6 he performed so poorly that Kevin McHale had no other choice but to pull him off the court, but nevertheless the Rockets still advanced to the conference finals, where their run was ended by the hands of the Golden State Warriors, but the point was proven. Harden's playing style produced a significant amount of success regardless of the productivity from Howard, making Howard potentially replaceable, which is essentially what happened. The tension between the two players could have subsided after nearly making the finals, but unfortunately it reached new peaks once rumors started to spread that Harden was pushing for Clint Capella to play over Dwight Howard. Howard, rightfully concerned about his role, went straight to management to raise his concerns. And in an attempt to receive some clarity, Dwight Howard also made a request to Houston Rockets general manager, Daryl Morey, to be a bit more involved in the offense. And in that conversation, Howard claimed that Morey told him he did not want him to be more involved in the offense, that how the offense was ran at the time was done purposely, which then led Howard to be confused to why exactly he was on the team, which then led to further dysfunction, which then led to a really bad start to the 2015-2016 season, which then led to the firing of Kevin McHale, which then led to questionable effort, and the result of it all was the Houston Rockets finishing with a record of 41-41, and which was good enough to make the playoffs, but in the first round, the Rockets had to face a 73-9 and Golden State Warriors team, in which obviously the Rockets got bounced out in the first round. And yet again, it is important to note, since this is becoming a consistent theme, Harden struggled tremendously to find his shot in the first four games of that series. And once the volatile season was over, Dwight Howard decided to opt out of his contract and take his talents to his hometown in Atlanta, leaving the Houston Rockets in a very peculiar situation, with now having to search for not only a head coach, but also a co-star replacement. So the Rockets had to move quick. First, Houston addressed their head coaching vacancy and decided to go for offensive guru Mike D'Antoni for the job. 
After that, the Rockets attempted to swing big in free agency, but unfortunately fell short and decided to settle for some more role players to surround Harden with both Eric Gordon and Ryan Anderson. Due to the lack of a co-star, the Rockets had to be pretty creative on how they were going to build their roster to compete in a very tough Western Conference. First, they decided to move a young Clint Capella up to the starting lineup, and backing him up was an even younger Montrezl Harrell. Ryan Anderson will become the starting power forward, only making it the second time in his career where he would become a full-time starter. Trevor Reza and Patrick Beverly would keep their starting position, however, Beverly would be moved down to the shooting guard position, while D'Antoni boldly entrusted James Harden with the starting point guard position which honestly, looking back at it, wasn't the craziest decision in the world. However, it would be an extreme step to making James Harden even more ball dominant. The ideology of these decisions centered around the premise that the Houston Rockets were going to have to mask their defensive problems with high octane offense. With James Harden's unique ability of being an elite facilitator and scorer at the epicenter of it all. And oh yeah, a bunch of three-point shooting as well. In the beginning of the season, the playing style really wasn't panning out as the Rockets struggled to stay above 500. However, after November, the Houston Rockets were on a 22-game tear where they only lost two games. The Rockets would then ride out this momentum all the way to the All-Star break where they had a record of 40-18, and 18, led by James Harden, who was not only playing at an MVP caliber level, but was putting up historic numbers in the process. In Houston, despite losing Dwight Howard and forcing both Clint Capella and Ryan Anderson into starting roles, ended the season with a record of 55 and 27. But more importantly, James Harden produced unbelievable numbers all season long to lead the Rockets to that level of success. But unfortunately finished second in the MVP race, this time to his ex-teammate in Russell Westbrook, who too was putting up amazing numbers out in OKC. Speaking of which, the Rockets would match up with the Oklahoma City Thunder in the first round and come out victorious behind a OK series from Harden and then matched up with a 61 win San Antonio Spurs team in the second round. Where the Rockets would eventually fall short after six games and Harden infamously had a horrible outing in the closeout game where not only did he shoot two for 11 from the field, but lost to the Spurs who in that game did not play Kawhi Leonard. The 2016-2017 season was a bittersweet year for the Rockets. On one hand, the front office was quickly able to piece together a bunch of rambunctious role players that were driven enough to help the franchise overachieve, while Harden reached new peaks of NBA greatness. But on the other hand, even being very optimistic about the productivity of the roster currently constructed, the Rockets had a very clear ceiling and it wasn't competing in the NBA Finals. So Houston was desperate and knew that Harden needed another co-star alongside him if the Rockets had any chance of competing for a championship. So on June 28, 2017, the Rockets pulled the trigger, sending over Patrick Beverly, Montrez Harrell, Lou Williams, a bunch of other players, and a first round pick to the Clippers, and in return received future Hall of Famer Chris Paul and his four year $160 million contract extension. A risky decision to say the least, and it wasn't just because of the financial commitment. Chris Paul over the years was known for being an injury prone player and also built a reputation to not have the greatest relationship with certain teammates of his throughout his tenure in LA. But most importantly, CP3 was a ball dominant guard and the redundancy and playing style sharing the backcourt with James Harden certainly raised some concerns but to be fair to Chris Paul he did go out his way to attempt to reduce the potential anxiety that many fans and media members may have had about the new constructed roster by claiming that he was willing to be more off ball the Rockets would then sign forwards PJ Tucker and Luke Bayamute to address some defensive concerns that they saw from the prior year and went into the season very optimistic. After the first 30 games of the season, the Rockets only had five games in their loss column. What was even more impressive is that Chris Paul only played 16 of those first 30 games. In his absence, James Harden picked up right where he left off last year and continued to go on a historic tear. The Rockets would continue to shock the NBA world after the All-Star break 
and finished the year off with a record of 65 and 17. And even though in many regards, Harden's numbers did start it to dip a bit, he was all in favor of winning more games and becoming more efficient. And for his effort, Harden was finally awarded with league MVP. The Rockets would go into the playoffs with the number one record in the Western Conference and make quick work of their first two round matchups with the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Utah Jazz. But the real challenge was waiting for them in the Western Conference Finals, which were the Golden State Warriors. And no, this wasn't the same Warriors team that Harden struggled to be early on in his career. Because during the summer of 2016, an already dominant unit added an even more dominant player in Kevin Durant. However, if the Rockets and Harden wanted to compete for a championship, then this is the team that they have to overcome. And surprisingly, Houston came really close to doing so. After losing game one, Houston bounced back in game two with an amazing offensive performance from both PJ Tucker and Eric Gordon. The Rockets would fall short to the Warriors in game three with a 41 point blowout, but bounced back in games four and five with very close victories, giving the Rockets a 3-2 series lead. But unfortunately, Chris Paul would suffer a hamstring injury down the stretch of game five that would keep him sidelined for the remainder of the series. So all Houston has to do is win one game and they have two attempts to do so. In game six, Houston came out swinging early on and built a comfortable 10 point lead heading into halftime. But unfortunately that lead didn't last too long thanks to a poor shooting performance from the Houston Rockets in the second half where they shot four for 17 from behind the arc and 10 for 34 from the field. In game seven, the Rockets found themselves in a very similar situation, coming out the gate strong, building a double digit lead heading into halftime, but unfortunately the results were the same. And infamously, the Rockets went cold, missing 20 straight three pointers in the second half, highlighted by Harden, Ariza, and Gordon going 0 for 17 from deep in the second half. And the result was not only a nine point win for the Warriors, but a 3 2 lead blown from the Rockets. The 2018 2019 season was more or less a bad rerun for James Harden. Harden further cemented himself as an NBA legend, rewriting the history books, while his co star, though impactful, was noticeably declining, and both of them were surrounded by players who understood and accepted their roles as they space out the floor which translated to regular season success, but the postseason run would end by the hands of the Golden State Warriors yet again. And even behind the scenes, we see a lot of similarity. As Chris Paul echoed sentiments from Dwight Howard several years ago, as he voices frustrations with the way the offense was ran through the ball dominance of James Harden, which that led to disagreements, which then led to some very ugly moments, which then led to Harden requesting that Chris Paul needed to be traded, and all of that resulted in the face of the franchise getting his way yet again. On July 16th, 2019, the Houston Rockets sent over a slew of draft picks, as well as Chris Paul, to the Oklahoma City Thunder, and in return received Russell Westbrook. And if you were one of the many people who were concerned about the fit with James Harden and Chris Paul, well, you definitely were gonna have some questions about the fit with Russell Westbrook because Westbrook was not only a ball dominant guard, but also lacked the scoring versatility from Chris Paul that could possibly have made it work. The lack of versatility from Westbrook revealed itself very early on in the season, but with Houston nearly exhausting all of their options, they had no other choice but to double down on their newly constructed duo. And before the trading deadline during the 2019-2020 season, the Rockets decided to part ways with Clint Capella and bring in Robert Covington, who not only provides better three-point shooting, but also fully committed the Houston Rockets to running small ball. After this transaction, Westbrook's numbers went through the roof, and it seems as if this was going to be the best way for Harden and Westbrook to coexist with one another. And to the credits of the Rockets, they did finish strong in the regular season, but yet again lost in the playoffs in the second round, but this time to the Los Angeles Lakers. And once the offseason began, it basically brought us to where we are today. Mike D'Antoni resigned as a head coach. Daryl Morey, after putting in over a decade of service in Houston, decided to walk away. Westbrook followed the steps of other stars who played alongside Harden and voiced his frustrations with the offense and inevitably requested to be traded. And not too long after that, after eight seasons in H-Town, James Harden demanded to be traded. 
The Rockets and their new brain trust tried their hardest to piece together a competent roster that could potentially convince Harden to stay, but at last Harden stood firm, seeking new opportunities in other organizations. And honestly, he didn't have the greatest execution behind it, as he not only participated in birthday parties in the middle of a pandemic, but also started the regular season potentially out of shape. And with the Rockets left with no other choice, on January 13th, they pulled the trigger and traded James Harden to the Brooklyn Nets. Harden's time in Houston is the definition of complicated, and if anyone attempts to simplify it with a hot take, then they wouldn't be doing any party justice. And as I look back, I would have to just say, Harden came into Houston as a bench player who overachieved so consistently that the new bar for him had to be set at a championship level. And from overachieving manifested characteristics that were ugly, but honestly should have been expected. And even though Harden was never able to lead Houston to a championship or even to the finals, his time as a Rocket is far from a disappointment. And honestly, looking back at it, it is easily one of the most impressive stretches the NBA has offered in the past two decades. But with that being said, people, please let me know what you think about the video, the Harden situation, and everything that happened throughout his time in Houston. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like these type of videos, I have a whole playlist where I'm breaking down timelines of other players, of other teams, and even draft picks. So make sure you go check that out on my channel. And also on the screen, I have another video that you may find very intriguing that is similar to the one you just watched. But until next time, I'll see you all later. Peace.